G'day folks, this afternoon's little repair job, will hopefully repair, I've got my neighbour's neighbour's uh, old LG plasma. Uh, this was his garage come hangout room TV and it started glitching on the OSD and just changing channels, like you push the button on the remote and it would take like 10 minutes for it to change channel and the on-screen display would be all glitchy, it'd just, it'd just be an absolute nightmare to operate and it didn't matter if it was using analog or digital signal or using um, the manual controls on the front of the panel so it sounds like the digital board's gone faulty uh, I do have a replacement thankfully I got one off a busted panel the one that donated my little uh, PDP sample which I haven't yet put under the microscope but I probably will just for this video this is the top corner section I think because it's got the little stem on it so it's come off the top corner there um, yeah, very thin panel. I got one off the side of the road, or a friend found one on the side of the road. I think it was Jay that gave it to me. He brought it home and found a crack in the top corner or somewhere like that. And, um, yeah, I pillaged all the boards out of it, and we've got one here, which is a uh, replacement input digital board. So I'm hoping that's it. I don't think there's anything else for controlling the remote and on-screen display. That's the panel drive there. But that's the um, power supply. Interesting, there's a red LED and a green LED. Um, I'm going to check that out. First of, first thing I'm going to check out is voltages. And it's kind of curious that there's a red LED on there. I wonder if um, 5 volts is a bit low. Uh, that's the very first thing, but worst case scenario, I swap the uh, board out. So we'll have a bit of a look at it. They're a pretty straightforward system. Steel backing panel and everything, no alley in it. A little bit alley, those, those brackets there are alley. Um, yeah, lots of semiconductors. Plasmas are quite fascinating if you're into semiconductors and inverters. It's all inverter based power supply, up to 300 volts, 197 volts DC, I think it is. Um, no, 190 volts uh, on the panel, but I think startup voltage is a bit higher. Yeah, VS is 195 volts DC. And yes, it will give you the shock of a lifetime if you get across it the wrong way. It wouldn't be enjoyable. So anyway, let's feed this thing a DVD and just run it till it plays up, essentially. I've got the remote. I can even use the front panel and just double check that that's doing it. Uh, mostly going off his word. So of course you always check to see if the customer's right or if you're right. But so far it's just been idling and not doing anything, so let's see how we go. And while it's, um, while it's running and warming up, I'm guessing it's a thermal issue maybe with the CPU. I might even put this under the microscope and we can have a look at what a uh, HD plasma panel looks like up really close. You see the little pixels and blocks, blocks of phosphor. Uh, something's not right here. I think that red LED is really telling me something. I might have a power supply issue. This horrible buzz coming from the uh, tweeters. No audio. I turn the audio up on DVD and everything and I just get more buzz. And it is plugged in right. That's all AV1. And I don't like it. Picture's fine. Picture's working fine, but... Um, yeah, I'm on... Yeah, audio out on the DVD. Video is normal. Um, that's not good. I'm going to test quickly test some voltages and just be done with it, I think. If the... Uh, Voltages from the power supply are bad. I'm going to have to go after the uh, low voltage supply. Well, the buzzing's gone, but the on screen display has crashed now. <laughs> uh, so if I go and change, uh, let's say, input, nothing. Let's see. <laughs> So that should clear itself. I don't think it's just the remote menu. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. No volume control. When it does clear itself, it'll suddenly go blurt and suddenly go through everything that I've pressed. Like it's stored it in memory. It just can't process the darn thing. And I've just checked the voltages across the power supply coming out here and they're fine. I don't have a way of measuring AC ripple. I don't have any leads from my damn scope yet. I don't know if it's actually a um, issue with that. I'm tempted just to put another board in and see what happens. Because that Genesis chip is getting extremely hot now. So 
a little low voltage reg there which again is smoking hot and that little guy there is fairly cool this is all low voltage the highest there is 14 16.5 volts so it is safe to touch you just risk damaging it if you short something out yeah it's not um, it's not burning me so it's not too bad it's still completely locked up nope Volts, volts are fine, everything else seems to be fine. I'm going to have a look at the manual. I see a friend downloaded a manual to his Dropbox, so I'll just see if I can get it off him and uh, yeah, I'll have a quick look at what the uh, red indicator LED on the top means. Pretty sure it means the um, voltages are bad. It's probably coming off this main regulator here and telling me that there's a uh, problem with the voltages. So yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting to note that this board does not have that option though. There's a little three pin SMD spots there, LD1 and LD2. <laughs> They're not on this model. Everything else is the same. It's just this particular board doesn't have it on them. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. As long as it works. But yeah, that's kind of odd. I'll have a look at the service manual first. We'll see how we go from there. But yeah, voltage reference from its own ground and panel ground, not a problem seems to be doing just fine. Yeah, can't even turn it off. All the controls locked up, everything. Main power's locked up. Input's gone. Nothing. Okay, main board is completely crashed. That's not a good thing. I'm surprised I can't turn it off. I mean, there's no manual hard... Con oh, there we go. You just finally thought about it and did it. <laughs> it's like, I'm done now. Yeah. Red could just be standby. I don't know. That's what the manual's for. Let's read the manual, RTFM, and then find out. And then I'll uh, throw this board in there and see what it does. And run it for half an hour and an hour. If it, if it works, run it for an hour or so. And if it doesn't crash at all, fine run it on another day. I'll keep it for a couple of days and run it on a nice hot day and just see what it does. If it doesn't crash on a hot day, it's good to go. Because it will be in a garage, it will be subjected to more... Actually, no, it's not going in the garage. He wants to put it in the kids' room. Um, he bought a new TV for the garage, 40 and 51 inch Samsung, for like 400 bucks or something like that. And he just said, like, don't spend too much time or money on this. Just, if you can fix it, fix it. We'll put it in the kids' room. If not, junk it. So... I really want to fix it for him. I've got more than enough junk plasmas around, so he can definitely uh, do with not having more junk plasma stuff around. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to help him out. I fixed his air conditioner on uh, yesterday in 40 degree heat. Again, blown run cap. <laughs> Those cheapo run caps just tend to cook and die after a while. So that was an easy 30 minute fix just by the time I uh, running back back and forth between his place and my place and standing in the shade waiting for the thing to go through its timer start up. <laughs> it was a fairly decent job. That and rewiring it all too because it was all um... it had one of those multi combo run caps in it and uh... yeah you know you, if you replace it with individual caps you've got to make some new cables and things like that so it was a bit of fun. Well I checked connections and nothing in the manual about these LEDs and it's just freaked out again these screws were not that tight, like they actually tightened the um, threads but the board was flopping around so I tightened all that up and tightened this down as per recommendation to check the ground ran for, I had sound for like 60 seconds and then this so it's uh, time to change the board out, screw it take a chance, I don't, I don't have a set of uh, leads for my scope and the scope's so old it'd be fairly hard to check for ripple current with it so I'll just throw another board at it and see what happens. It's the best I can really do at the moment.